Before we get started, please take the time to like, add, and subscribe to our pages on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and iTunes. Also, please leave us a review. We can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Blink. Blink. What's up? What's up, everybody? It is another wonderful Wednesday with the Wandering Ways crew. It's on the Wandering Ways podcast, and we are just kind of wandering through our days. We're here, and as usual, I am the Reverend Mark, and with me, as per usual, is the Ranger Zach. Ranger Zach, my guy, how we doing? You know, just celebrating our 100th anniversary of Wandering Ways. 100th anniversary? Yep. Or I don't know what 100 you're talking about. 100 years old, this podcast, you know, because somebody somebody in the year 2123 is tuning in because they found this old gem, and I want to say hello to them. So, that would be hello. like 102, by the way. We started the... It'd have to be... It'd have to be uh 2120. That's that's the hundredth anniversary. You didn't you didn't you didn't count the two years of uh of holdout where you got real aggressive there in 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 the late sixties. In the late sixties. <laughs> <laughs> the late sixties. So twenty so, sixties is where it's gonna get real rough. <laughs> yeah you're gonna you're gonna hold out yeah i just know it's fun it's always a good time that's the about. lockout year <laughs> yeah right like the labor the labor dispute yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> royalties man royalties. yeah or uh what's the band metaphor for it where it's like uh i'm gonna go try my solo career <laughs> yeah there you go mark wins solo no <laughs> yeah. it was actually Actually, and, and this is Zach from the future came and told me this. You actually get lost at sea. <laughs> I get lost out at sea. That's good. That's good to know. So, well, now that I do know, come like around 2060, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be very uh, wary about any sea voyages I do. You'll be in the in your 70s, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I will. Well, no, what would I be? Yeah, no, because it'll be, but yeah, shit, I'll be like 60, <laughs> 70. I'm be old as hell then. You'll I'm figure gonna, it out. Now, this is what's going to happen is when we just kill me out at sea. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going old and see now. Push me on a boat and send me. And then that just, yeah, I don't know, pin a $20 bill to me and say good luck. Good luck. He figured it out. <laughs> he, he landed in Taiwan and uh, figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> no it's always good it's always good what have you been up to you've been getting outdoors i i you've been you talked earlier on the podcast you're 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 traveling for work but you're not you're not breathing that fresh mountain air no not breathing fresh mountain air i'm breathing um <clears throat> circulated air in either planes or buses uh there's no fresh just circulated good old-fashioned recycled air um because you know that's the best air out there <laughs> um no i unfortunately haven't done shit the weather's been here has been so shitty it's been uh it's been just snowing all the time Dude, I, didn't, same. I didn't move here for snow <laughs> i can tell because you're not you're not like Low key, I feel like you would move to Montana, especially like Missoula, if it didn't snow as much. Like yeah, it would have. I would move. There's a lot of places I would put on my list if it did not snow as much. <laughs> seven days is fine. I'll take seven days. <laughs> but if you go eight, if you go eight days of snow, I'm like, nah, I'm out. <laughs> and you're like, I want my snow from Christmas, the, the, the 23rd. If you could come about like three o'clock on the 23rd and then exit by like the 31st, because we got New Year's Eve parties to attend. <laughs> we don't need to be yeah. driving on ice. 100%. I mean, there, I'll take an early December. That's okay. Or like, you know, even like a mid to late January snow, I'm okay with. But again, 
seven days. That's that's all you get. They don't have to be in a row. They don't yeah. have to be. It should be seven days spread out in three months. I'm fine with that. But if you hit that eighth day, I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm out. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I, you know, here we got, I mean, it wasn't sticking. I don't know. It wasn't sticking nor melting. So is it just like um, evaporating when it hits the ground or I don't know. But it was like just like snow and big flakes all day. Uh, so it's cold. I mean, I don't know. I. I saw Easter Sunday coming up here. It was supposed to be 78 degrees. It is now dropped on my weather thing to 71, but it's 25 right now as we speak. So is it 71 in Montana? Yeah. in Billings is what the weather's supposed to be. On. Oh, okay. Cause it was supposed to be this, this weekend down here. Wow. Sunday was supposed to be like 70. And last time I checked, um, it's gone down to 63 and raining. There's a cold front moving in, and that's what same thing happened here. Um, because it was up to 78, and it was I saw when we were looking at Newburgh, even Newburgh, Oregon, there up at the Portland area, 80, 81. I did see at one point they were predicting an 81. Yeah. But no, it's it's looking like a cold front moving in, looking like 50s and 60s and rain. But that's what you get with uh climate change. And if you don't believe in it, it is real because it feels like June has become more springy it feels like november has become more folly yeah. uh, december is even becoming more folly like you're not getting that snow in december till like late december now when you'd get it in november um, yeah yeah and, and i just want to be tan everybody that's all <laughs> i really want i want to start adding a little color i am i am way i'm way too white I know you I know you apply for those Florida jobs and those uh, Hawaii jobs all the time when you see them pop up in your industry. That one, uh, San Diego, always looking down there. Hey, man, uh, I'm I on just, board. I'm almost to the point where I might even go to a tanning salon. I want to get tan so bad. You know, I did that before uh, spring break one year. I went I went tanning at it and did the whole like stand in the booth and do it. It's not that good for you um so i just did it the one time um sit now i mean the nice thing is like come summer when when you can get the with get on the rivers out here and go floating with jared definitely check that episode out we just talked about we talked about going to yellowstone but we also talked about going fishing um but we sit on a raft and i mean you just get that nice tan on a raft all day long and i'm about it um unless you're tyler I, i don't know if you remember when we went on the bighorn with tyler that that pink red that he had. He was sunburned from before that though. Uh, he was burnt like a orange. Well, yeah. Yeah. He was sunburned. And then, then he got even worse on the boat. Huh. So, or yeah, on the raft. Cause he was, he went somewhere like before, didn't he? Yeah. I don't know where they went, but yeah, you're right. I mean, he, I remember maybe... him being like starting yeah. off sunburnt. Yeah, I mean, he was, he's a, yeah, he's an idiot in that sense. <laughs> Wear your sunscreen. It's good for you. That's how you get skin cancer if you didn't know. <laughs> like wearing the sunscreen or not wearing the sunscreen? Not wearing the sunscreen. Yeah. Well, there's an argument that the chemicals in sunscreen aren't good for you either. So, you know, either chemicals in your sunscreen or a team melanoma, you pick. <laughs> Who knows? Team melanoma right here. In need of LED lights for your vehicle? Look no further than our friends at Oxteo, keeping our vehicles well lit while on the road while looking for Bigfoot. Make sure to use code RUGARU, R-U-G-A-R-U, on your next set of LED lights. Hey, hey there, Reverend. Um, I heard that you might be running dry on your sticker supplier. Yeah, I've been looking around and I've kind of like run out of cool stickers to buy and put on water bottles and stuff. Well, I I mean, have you seen the stuff Josh has been coming out with lately? No, I have not. Well, he is doing some really cool stuff with the Shop LS574. Yes, they're working with indigenous communities and making some really cool stickers. Um, He has a really cool buffalo mountain sticker there's even water bottles hats sweatshirts the whole swag and we even got a discount code for you guys yes if you use wandering ways at shop ls574 you're going to be getting a discount on your next purchase but not only that you're going to be giving a percentage of that sale to the little shell tribe as well as they donate 
a dollar of every sale to murdered and missing indigenous women. So just such a cool thing going on there. You know, you use the code wandering ways, W A N D E R I N G W A Y S. And you put that in there, boom, you're getting a discount. The wild west is full of dangers from snakes to bears. The outdoorsman must be prepared. That is why when you experience rivers like the San Juan or the Yellowstone, you must bring a blue ribbon net. Handcrafted and biodegradable, these classic wooden fishing nets are all you need while on the river. Make sure to use code RUGARU10 when checking out at Blue Ribbon Nets. Again, the code is RUGARU10. R-U-G-A-R-U-1-0. Um... <clears throat> with the you know the the yeah we were we were joking about the weather not being uh as great uh before before we do jump into i because this is gonna segue into it i promise everybody we're not just gonna talk about random ass shit today but you know the weather is being bad but still everyone is migrating like you still see the geese like migrating north do you think they're like pissed that it's still like super cold when they reach these places? Like, yes, like, that's hey. what. Yes, that's the fucking problem. That's the problem with climate change. These animals don't know what to fucking do, and they're freaked out. Not only that, like you take 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 the last hundred years, okay, the last hundred years, and just take the Midwest and the bison and the bugs and the snow geese and the canadian geese and all those migrations that you're talking about right yeah now cut those cut those fucking numbers down by to like the hunt say is that 100 percent down to like five percent that's where we're at we're the total population of these animals yeah of what the historic number when you look at oh, like yeah, bison yeah, yeah, right yeah. there was estimate 400 million bison from Northern Canada, Northern Alberta, the, where the Northern Plains go, all the way down into Mexico, from the Rocky Mountains to the Appalachians, with, there's even stories of natives taking the bison to Buffalo, New York, hence the name, and over the Rockies into the Columbia Upper Plateau area. And there were herds there as well. And what, like, Take the like you take that, you take that down, and then exactly you start changing the seasons. You have the flooding in Yellowstone that happened last year. Like, bro, it's not good. Those animals, no. that's like the antelope a couple of years ago. I mean, like five, ten years ago, somewhere in there, somewhere in that range, the antelope out here all drowned. Oh shit. Yeah, because of the flooding, because of the like yeah. flooding that's like happening because of climate change. We're out of whack. Our systems are out of whack. And it's messing with the animals. It's messing with the populations. And then we think we can manage the animals by having hunting seasons, this and that. But in reality, you look at the best way to manage animals is if, if you do have hunting seasons, is to actually do it like every three years and really let those other generations come back and and regenerate. Um, and we don't think that way. And like, when you look no. at like the, the native way of thinking, like you, you didn't do those bison jumps every day. You didn't go run yeah. a bunch of bison off a cliff every day, maybe once a summer. And that lasted you the whole summer because they had ways of preserving food back then. Like we act like, Oh, refrigeration and freezing and all these different methods there was nothing before them. There's always something before them. They're just improvements on those methods. You For know? sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> moving, moving back to the migration and migratory um, animals, uh, this is coming out a couple weeks after, but um, it was recently whale watching week here in Oregon. Um, honestly, I think it's one of the coolest things in the world. They set up the park rangers at these random pullouts to help identify whales for people that want to go check out the whales as they're coming through. Um, but well, I didn't, I, I didn't know in Oregon, right? You're saying identify the whales. They do that. You have 10 different species, uh, of whales, uh, gray whale, blue whale, uh, the minke whale, the humpback whale, the sperm whale, the Pacific white-sided dolphin, the bottlenose dolphin, the doll's porpoise, the harbor porpoise, and the killer whale that all 
migrate up and down the Pacific right here. Yeah, I don't I don't think the blue whales get this high though. I saw no, I saw a thing. That's where that one washed up on shore. Oregon State University's um there it's not common. A blue uh, whale? Yes, right here on the Oregon website. You go to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, right? Whales right here, blue whale. Blue whales are occasionally spotted off the Oregon coast, but not usually no closer than 10 miles offshore. These whales are part of the eastern North Pacific population that range from Alaska to Costa Rica. They migrate between feeding areas along the west coast of the United States and Canada and breeding and calving grounds off Mexico and Central America. They are thought to be among the most endangered of the great whales. Yeah, I knew the blue whale. Yeah, but that makes they sense are, too with Japan, like by not having the big numbers, like you're saying, like they're occasionally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were talking about the whale meat off off the uh, air here, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that does it makes more sense why you're finding it um, in those kind of markets. Japan, as sweet of a country japan is um that i want to visit um when it comes to like marine mammals they're super fucked up oh and especially when it comes to harvesting i mean a lot of their culture like the food revolves around the seafood you know especially the modern sushi and and how yeah. that has evolved but you're absolutely right when it comes to like what was that black black water or what was the name of the the documentary of japan there about yeah, well, the, the I think you're thinking of blackfish, which is the black. one that's on like the captive, and they'll go. No, 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 not blackfish. But fish. that that's not the yeah, that's not the one. It's um, well, shoot, it was on. I think we've even mentioned it on the podcast. Um, but it was Early on Netflix. On. It was on Netflix, and it was it went about like the whole fishing kind of industry. Um, but there's like a whole harbor where they just funnel like dolphins and stuff in, and then they basically essentially trap them and just oh. murder by the thousands. Yeah. Sea spiracy. Sea spiracy. Called... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sea spiracy. Um, yeah. definitely. And it's on Netflix, definitely worth the watch. And it really gets into like that industry of like whale killing, um, which yeah. personally, I don't think we should, um, with how endangered most of the populations are, it's good that most of the world has really kind of gotten behind not killing mm -hmm. them. I do think you look at like the Alaska native people who do ceremonial hunt a whale. Um, um I don't, personally, I think they do it only like every two years or when they're out of the meat and the meat lasts a long time. Don't the Macaw Indians in northern Washington do it? They might. I don't. I, I know mean, there, I know there's a. I think I'm fairly certain there's a tribe in, uh, like northwest, like north northwest yeah. Washington that they they harvest one a year. Right, and they just they fought for that recently that that right right it was like the last yeah. 10 years, last 10 years or so i think you're right that i think the macaw might be right they're the ones right out on the point there yeah like um, cape flattery like way i mean like the northwest yeah. most northwest corner of the lower 48 like up there i, I believe i believe so i believe they, they yes but also the alaskans and they'll do they'll go get a seal boat and that's the seal skin they use on the boat to like it's very, yeah. very traditional, very, very ceremonial in that sense, special mm -hmm. in that sense. And I mean, I think in that sense, it's okay to go harvest a whale because they're not harvesting them for commercial production. They're harvesting them for an entire village that it'll last a year or two years for that village. And it goes to the native people who are already struggling. Like if you go up to those Alaska villages, which you have, you know, it's yeah. not the best place in the world to live. Uh, yeah it's not i mean yeah it's some not. people argue with me because they live outdoors up there and they said it's just a place to sleep and i, I get that lifestyle too but yeah it's, it's, I, it's i mean you know everyone can find paradise in hell um well not everyone but people can find paradise in hell um which is it's more power to them yeah, but you're right that they don't do it like the commercially because what is it um in 
Seven Worlds, One Planet, that documentary, when they do the Antarctica episode, they like highlight an old or old whaling processing plant. Right. Um, and they talk about the numbers that they were like processing there on the day. And you're like, holy shit. Right. Like, no. That's ridiculous how many they were doing. It's wild how the world changed during the industrial revolution in, in, in many senses and worldwide, like it's crazy to think. Cause like in school in the two thousands, that's when I went to school and like middle school at elementary school. Right. We saw India and China and Pakistan and the middle East and Africa as third world countries. That's how that's how in in at least my education in the in the Catholic schools, which to me the Catholic schools I went to are very well funded and attended, so I thought we had up to date information, right? But you look at the way like we're taught in America to like look at these other countries, and yeah, sure, yes, they're behind in ways, right? Yeah, but fucking Yolo, man, he grew up in Uganda. Which you hear the stories about Uganda, Rwanda, and how, you know, the stuff that go, has gone on there, you know, and and you talk to him and you have the conversations with him and you're like, bro, you didn't grow up in like a third world country in, in my mind. You know what I mean? Like, you don't think that. No, yeah. yeah well, we were, that, that's we were taught a, that. Yeah, that's a totally 100 percent different conversation when you, <laughs> you know, that's that's a broken education system. And we could we could do that one, uh, you know, uh, very right. easily, but uh, not on this podcast. This one's a little <laughs> bit of a different kind of podcast. Um, but before we do jump in uh, to like the killer whales and orcas that we do have planned, I swear, everybody. Um, I just thought of this because we started talking kind of about it, like literally mid thinking um, because it dawned to me that uh, one of my favorite days of the year is coming up here soon. And so I was curious how you were going to, if you were going to celebrate a uh, good old earth day. Oh yeah. Probably when that's the 17th, right? No, I don't think, I think it's like the 22nd or 23rd. Well, I will go out that weekend uh, actually. Cause I'll be back in Montana from my trip out to Oregon. So, and it'll be right before I go to Albuquerque and we did some research, everybody for Albuquerque. We found Jemez hot springs, so check that out if you're interested yeah. in the socials. Uh, follow Zach Wandering Ways or at the Rougarou, and you might see some of Hamez Hot Springs on one of those channels. Um, no, Saturday it, the 22nd. There we go. That's I'll be Earth out. Day. Um, so I probably won't celebrate on Earth Day itself. I think I'll end up doing something on that Sunday. Um, if I'm thinking off the top of my head, I'll probably just end up going for a hike or a ride or something. And I'm going to take a trash bag. That's a great idea. Well, I, that's the, I'm going to try and convince Jared to go into the park. Cause I, I think April, I was looking in April there, a lot of the roads open up, um, to at least old faithful and down that way. So maybe get going into the park and see what we can see, uh, that day. But yeah, it's a great idea. We'll bring a trash bag, but. Yeah. Speaking of other worldly, just problems, problems in the world, things we need to fix. Talk about orcas in captivity, Mark. Uh, Miami, Florida is the location. Let's hear it. Miami Sea Aquarium. Uh, for people that don't follow um, whales in captivity news, um, which... To be fair, I think I follow more of it than most people. Um, you do. Yeah, surprisingly. I didn't realize that I do as much as like um as I like when I really sat down to it. Um, but <clears throat> if you're if you're curious, and you should all be curious, uh it the Miami Sea Aquarium. There is a lone orca left uh, living in like an isolation tank, by the way. It's not like one where people go and visit. Um, it's like it's alone, this guy, this poor whale. And it's not a big tank either. Um, but they are planning to return Tokitea, so T-O-K-I-T-A-E, or Lolita, 
Um, back to its native waters, which is in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, kind of a trek. Um, but they are it's big news because they are planning to free uh, Toki, as it's uh, per, the nickname here is pronounced in this, um, which is super exciting. Um, you sent me an article on like them it, because it's uh, associated with the tribe. Um, and I I sent you back a different thing saying like yeah it is but they're gonna move very slow on it <laughs> oh yeah well right here i'm seeing uh k5 uh nbc in seattle said uh the plan to bring the orca home will cost about 1.3 million dollars and much of that money has already been pledged by celebrities and other sorts um and the name the lummy name i'm gonna butcher the shit out of it because it's one of those salish words i feel like Skla Lichela Tea Note. S K A L I C H E L H T E N A U T. That's the the native word uh that the Lummi tribe gives it. Well, it's kind of cool though. I saw the Lummi tribe, they have um a new home for her. Um, because like you said, she was in a cement aquarium that she spent uh 50 years in, which is crazy. Yeah. And then I was also reading. So I'm going to, you know, so, oh, I was reading uh, her capture. They were talking about her capture in 1970. And uh, basically they were, they were, had boats with explosives to separate the adults from the babies because they only wanted the babies. Yeah. Uh, he was, she was four years. She was violently taken from her family in Washington's Pen Cove when she was four years old. But I was, we were having this conversation because her new home is going to be a net kind of enclosure out in the Puget Sound. Yeah, uh, which is kind of cool to to have a new home and have a have it in the ocean. And it sounds like I don't I don't necessarily know, but people are saying her mother is 93 years old. To to uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, when we decided to do this, I'm looking up facts about <laughs> um, whales in captivity, mainly because I wanted to find all the horrible facts to make sure that everyone understands that we shouldn't be doing this anymore and that we shouldn't be supporting these institutions that allow uh, whales to be in captivity. But one of the facts that I saw is, and I want to make sure I get it right here, um, is that uh, scientists say orcas in captivity usually only live up to 25 years old, which is pretty amazing that old Toki can make it to 50, uh, while the average lifespan in the wild is anywhere from like 50 to 80 years. So it's not surprising that, uh, you know, Toki's mother is still like alive um and you, you know orcas like they're truly actually like incredible creatures because in reality and this is kind of just a personal belief here in reality there's not much that separates them from humans other than how we interact with the environment right they're they have these huge family systems where they very family oriented. Uh, they're super intelligent creatures, um, you know, so. Well, like, they in, even in their fins, their fins are hands, essentially. Yeah. They have the, the finger. And that, I mean, there's theories that the humans, when they say we came from the sea, essentially would have come from like a mammal, like a whale or a dolphin mm -hmm. in the sense of how they came up on land and evolved over time. So definitely there's something there. I mean, I, I, I was, I guess in my lifetime, I did go to sea world. I, you know, I was a kid at the time. I was, I've been to sea world too. It was when I was young. I didn't <laughs> comprehend it, you know? So right. Uh, Newport, they used to, the Newport Aquarium used to have a captive killer whale, uh, Keiko. You can actually see uh, Keiko live in a movie called Free Willy. Um, and, and also, fun fact, filmed in uh, Astoria, which is, you know, where the Goonies and I'm all from, you know? 
Right. No. And it, you're, you talk about, you talk about uh free Willy and then you talk about uh sea world with Shamu. Right. And the way that those animals are able to be trained as the mammals, the, the smart mammals that they are. And I think part of that is survival. One, it's a survival skill to be trained because yeah. you want the food, you want to live, you are in a, in a place you don't want to be, but it's it you see like you just i don't know those animals there's something about them and i saw a video the other day of just like a whale's eye and the way that the whale was looking at this boat and the way they look at us to study us and you hear like you hear the ages of these whales they they're like you know bird some birds in that sense that live forever and like we live you know long too and you compare that of like what one really goes through and sees in one's lifetime. And you take that to a whale who has probably for the most of its lifetime, seen a lot of destruction. Yeah. Um, And they can comprehend that stuff. You know, we, we don't like we, we froze blackbirds are able to learn and recognize yeah. people. Right. If we're able to say that about a bird, what are we able to say about whales? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, whales are just—they're super cool creatures. You know, I—I I was fortunate enough when I was in Canada with Vince and Phil to do that whale watching to see them li- uh, in the wild. Um, which it was—it was wild to see them, you know, hunt the the seals because they do it differently. And then you know, the, you, you could see them messing with the poor seal, letting the like young ones like learn to hunt and you're like oh damn that kind of sucks because you can see the seal like in the water like looking around just like i'm fucking dying <laughs> and you're like you're like eh, it's kind of nature my guy <laughs> um oh it's it's wild i mean i saw there's that video of that uh that sea lion or seal jumping up on that boat and the orcas or whatever are like circling the boat basically yeah. you're it, it's interesting is what it is it's cool it is. i mean it's nature it um, but you look at way like to me, you look at whales, you look at elephants, uh, you look at s- some of the like monkeys, even like orangutans and gorillas, and you really like look at their family structures, their social structures, their hierarchies. You know, it really isn't much different to us humans, and in reality, us the only really complex thing about us humans how we've made a currency system of how we value life and value one another and value survival and food and all these things where it's like in the animal kingdom, it's just survival, you know, it's just yeah. live another day. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, not to wander too far away here, but um, I think one of the, the the thing that separates us from all of these different things, all the way down to plants and even fungi, um, and even something I think well into the future, like I'm not even, I'm probably not even going to be a thought uh, uh, when this actually comes true, but it's communication. You know, that's what truly, truly actually separates like, you know, us from anything is they're communicating we don't you know, know but yeah we don't know it you know you think of dogs they've learned to comprehend like humans um but it's not like and, and you know even humans to a point can kind of understand a dog well you, you know when it needs to go bathroom you know when it needs its food you know like well, take- in the classic right. you know the classic what timmy's in the well <laughs> you know so um it, it, we know how to communicate. There's just going to be at some point, you know, you're going to be able to take your, your phone and you're going to be able to put it up to something, whether it's a whale, a monkey, a dog, or your, uh, your priced orchid. And you're going to be able to get information back. That's now in your language where it's like, okay, your, your freaking orchid's going to be like, I would like, 16 ounces of water please <laughs> you know well no and you're absolutely right because we don't realize we have to think in our mind talking is that right yeah it's not because we also communicate with 
fucking pictures, emojis will communicate with one another. Nonverbal, you know? Right. How many animals? You talk about elephants can stick their trunk down to the ground and communicate with another elephant thousands of miles away, right? How different is that than us rubbing rocks together, a.k.a. our cell phones, and sending a signal and communicating you know, thousands of miles away. We just don't know what, you know, and take that down to all levels. Insects, fungi, like you were saying. hundred percent. You know, like, it's, it's a, it's a lack of communication skills is what, and, and I truly believe at some point in life that the communication problem will be fixed. You know, we're just not going to be here for it. Well, you, I'm going to argue the point that, and and I like that you use the word fixed because it acknowledges the fact that it was once there. And you look at like Adam and Eve, right? They, they lived in a garden of Eden, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in nature in was in harmony. You look at like native American cultures, native African cultures and the way they lived with the land, with the animals, right? in that harmony so you're right some somewhere along the line it was broken and here we are facing the music of like getting further and further away but then again throughout that we'll get closer and closer and closer whatever that was we don't know um but 100 percent um speaking of you know communication animals adapting all of that uh, cause it's all, it's all really cool stuff. It's all super cool. And I think it's actually time for my favorite segment, cool shit in nature. I like this. And one. I have two different ones, uh, today as I always do, but I have two exciting ones today. The second one I'm really excited for because it was like wild to watch. Um, but this first one really fits into like, you know, adapting to the world. And um, so for the people that are just listening, uh, this is a elephant that is testing an electric fence with its hoof or foot. I don't really know what you call an elephant foot. Um, I'm going to just go elephant foot. But you can see it knows that it can shock. And so it's now testing to see if it's going to be shocked. And then it just does what it needs to do and knocks it down like no other. <laughs> this pushes the pole over. Yeah. And then I wonder, I, I wonder if that fence there is, if it is electrical or not. And it's testing to see if it is because, oh, it's yeah, no, over. that's. It may not be a truly, it does kind of look like it's an electric fence. Well, my Um, dad, see, my dad tells me he's going to do something like that and make it look electrical, but not because people question it all the time, regardless. Yeah, they do. (laughs) But, (laughs) you know, the, the theory is if, you know, you shock enough people enough times, they just have to look at it and they go, oh, no, no, that's, you know, it's the classic, though, the stove is hot. I shouldn't touch the hot thing. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm proud of this elephant. I really, I really hate the fact that we do fence things in and we do like, we have created that as man that like this land is mine. I yeah. own, I own this, this piece of it. And yeah. I get that, but I also am like, fuck dude, like, that how many how much issues does that cause if it would have just like people acknowledge like yeah you live in this area but mm-hmm. uh moving to the second one um so this is a, a jaguar chasing some monkeys and, oh wow uh, whoa yeah so <laughs> that's exactly what i had so this is uh again from the great uh instagram uh count nature's metal um but you see the leopard go up in the tree and then the monkeys are there. And then out of another tree, you see a monkey fly. And then you see the leopard full flying catches the monkey on the other tree. Well, what's crazy is like he, I don't know if it's two leopards or if it's just the one, like, cause he's like, he falls out of the one tree right here. Yeah. 
And then he must chase the one on the ground, run it up the other tree because it jumps from another tree back to the original tree. And there goes the jaguar. And it like, yeah, right. It just grabs one. Yeah, it's I mean, it was wild watching this the first time because it's like, oh, that's cool. Like it chased it on the branch. Oh, it fell. That kind of sucked. Like, that's cool. And then I'm watching it and you see the other monkey fly. You're, oh, cool. And then like, bam, there it is. That big cat flying in the air. Yeah. Boom. And those other monkeys up above are just like, dang. Yeah, that's it's a bad day for the monkey. But, you know, kudos to the leopard for uh, figuring a way out. Right. Um, Did you know? So I was reading more about these whales here. Oh, and good. The most common whale off the Oregon mm-hmm. coast is the gray whale. In addition to approximately 200 resident gray whales that live nearly year-round off Oregon... A winter and spring migration brings about 18,000 more past the coast. Oof. Yeah, I did know that gray whales were actually the most common because um, I've seen a fair amount of gray whales uh, in my time. Um, well, you, you lived on the coast, I would hope. Yeah, that well, that's why I've seen a lot of them. Um, it's always cool hearing the surfers' stories, like when they're surfing and the whales, like, 15 feet from them um because they always uh they're always like oh man it was cool and then they always the one thing they always talk about every single surfer that's ever been close to a whale that i've talked to um always says they stink they just smell oh. like just like bad fish <laughs> i mean makes sense i mean it, oh uh, it, yeah you hear that and you're like oh, I, I get it especially the way they breathe out that hole i bet that hole yeah, I bet that's some stinky breath in a sense. Um, yeah. yeah, they also say uh, tic tac. You could you could see. I don't know. Have you ever seen humpback whales? They said they're seen more f- about fifteen miles off coast during the migrations. Uh, um, I have not seen a humpback. Um, I've seen the of the whale species. I've seen of wild whales. I've seen gray beluga and killers. Oh. When it comes to the wild ones, you know, didn't you guys have a killer whale that worked its way up the Columbia there by you? No, there was a gray whale worked uh oh. worked up and was like right outside Astoria, which Astoria is inside the mouth of the Columbia more than people realize. Um, no, it is kind of tucked in there a little, but that's why you have those bays essentially. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, yeah, no, it was a couple of years. Like every August, it would make its way like up into the river, um, because it's weird because you'd you'd go over the bridge into Washington, and as you're like going, you like you can look at the river obviously, and you're just looking, and all of a sudden you see this massive whale, and you're like, holy shit! <laughs> damn, damn. I'm reading here too, uh, the orca. Which is interesting. They're talking Orca and Depot or Newport and Depot Bay are the best place to see orcas on in Oregon. And oh. uh they're they're saying how um they've had one chase a sea line all the way through Yaquina Bay as far as Toledo. Oh, that'd be wild. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be wild. Up the, uh, up the river there, yeah. The um, my skipper I used to go up and fish in Alaska with. He said he saw a killer whale chase a seal into like the mouth of the Naknik River, which is like the river we would go into, like to the canneries and stuff. And he said like it got this f- seal flung it around. And he's like the amount of blood that was oh. like in the water was like wow. He's like it turned the river red. That's crazy. Yeah, but that, I mean that happens. Uh, any dolphins? You see any dolphins uh, in in uh, Astoria sea, seaside there? Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I've seen I've seen a couple doll. I've seen a porpoise. Um, you know, so a lot of the times you'll be just like I remember growing up little, and you'll be just like playing on the beach, and all of a sudden, like someone would be like, "Look out there! There's a," and it'd be like a porpoise or even like a whale sometimes, and you're like, "Wow, that's wild." And you're a little kid, so now you're right. like, you're like in the water, and you're like, look at I'm, I'm swimming with the porpoise, and the thing's like maybe a half mile away or something. <laughs> well, right, and that's exactly it. It's funny how far away from the coastline they do travel like that. You hear the humpbacks are 15 miles off the coast. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, huh. right. I, I mean, the ocean's big, so <laughs> it makes sense for him to be that far off um, in reality like that. Right. Um, but no, I mean, whales Whales are super cool. Um, we need to get them out of captivity. They don't belong there, um, all that stuff. But uh, I don't want to drag on too much longer. Um, we are kind of starting to run out of time here. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to move to our final words. So final words, my guy. Yeah, no, it was a great episode to talk about whales. And we kind of wandered our way into the climate change and into just the different weather issues that, I mean, it's what we're experiencing. I mean, just, you know, in February, I want to say it was 80 degrees in Washington, D.C. And you look at like New York City and they haven't gotten the amount of snow that they typically get. Um, So it's kind of crazy to see that. It's crazy to see this the shift in weather and the shift in changes and and see that, but it's also cool to go check out the whales. If you are in Oregon, you know, it was kind of neat to learn that they have a whale watching week. It is in April. Um, and it's worth it to go see the whales, uh, when you're out there. I remember as a kid going to the whale museum in Depot Bay, um, and you could book those whale tours. They have whale tours out on the coast. You could book if you really want, uh, and get seasick all day. But, uh, other than that, I'm, you know, I'm going to be out in Oregon. I'm going to head to the coast. Hopefully we see a whale or three and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, but until then, Reverend. Reverend's final words of wisdom say beautiful, everybody. I can't tell you how much I appreciate every single one of you for sticking it out, listening all the way, listening to us to wander about whales, wander about climate change, wander about Earth Day, back to whales, back to uh, fuck sea world because yeah, duh. Um, all of those things. So I can't, you guys are awesome. Great. Please like subscribe, follow all those fun things on the podcast. Um, and with that being said, peace out everybody. Bye.